Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Permis-moi de continuer cette conversation en anglais. Sabah al-Khair, Ashab Saada ou Al-Ma'ali, Al-Jalsa Batkoun, Bilouga l'Inglésia, Fasmahouli, Batahoul, La Louga l'Inglésia. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, a very beautiful morning, actually, from this uh, very beautiful uh, city. Uh, on this first ever uh, Vision uh, Golf uh, event in its first uh, edition. Uh, my name is uh, Faisal Abbas. I'm the editor-in-chief uh, uh, of Arab News, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East leading English language uh, daily, uh, which has a French edition, uh, by the way, uh, which we have launched in 2020, uh, arabnews.fr, uh, particularly for the reasons that we are going to be discussing on this uh, panel, uh, which is geopolitics uh, and business. Uh, having been a journalist for over 20 years, uh, I cannot stress enough how interrelated the two are, and we're going to find out in this panel how the two cannot be uh, separated. Uh, I mentioned 2020, uh, which is known not just because we launched Arab News France, but because of another thing called the pandemic that has happened during uh, that year. And that was a lesson uh, for everybody about how uh, geopolitics, um, uh, collab global collaboration, supply chain can be affected. Um, in 2020, um, that has impacted uh, oil prices. As we all remember, oil prices went into negative Uh, for uh, uh, and the market was uh, absorbed uh, the shock and uh, recovered since then. Um, in 2021, we all suffered the supply chain uh, impact of what happened during the uh, pandemic. Prices went up. Um, there were uh, problems with flights and frights. Um, in 2022, just as we were removing our masks and starting to go back uh, to normal, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, and you know how that geopolitical event impacted energy prices and supply chains uh, all over the world. Um, as we enter 2023, uh, ChatGBT was uh, a warm, gave us a warm welcome to the year. Um, now we are talking about how that's going to impact education, uh, jobs, manufacturing. Um, um, also, about two months ago, we, we all woke up uh, to uh, a sudden war uh, in Sudan, and um, I recently found out that uh, one, perhaps one of the least impacts of that war, apart from the tragedy, of course, and the lives lost, and the fact that the economic opportunity, and we don't know when that's going to end, is it might all impact our ability to drink Pepsi and Coca-Cola, because Sudan is the biggest and most important exporter of gum arabica, or somg al-arabi. So uh, hold on to your uh, cans of Coke and bottles of Coke at uh, home. But of course, we are here to discuss all of this uh, with our panel. Um, uh, on, and just to end this introduction on a positive note, Uh, news, um, although we are in the business of bad news, doesn't have to always be uh, negative, particularly in this part of the world that we are talking about um, in this panel. Uh, in fact, um, as an observer, I can tell you that for, since the uh, Al-Ula uh, Accord, which ended the GCC uh, rift uh, two years ago, uh, we have seen uh, a trajectory of positivity uh, in the region. We have Minister uh, al Khurayf uh, here from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is projected to be the fastest growing G20 economy, uh, overtaking India even uh, uh, this uh, year. Um, Qatar has hosted a very successful World Cup uh, last year. Um, uh, the United Arab Emirates hosted the Expo and is about to ho host Expo, um, um, COP28. Uh, businesses are booming. Uh, um, companies are relocating to uh, the region. So clearly there's something going on. And we are here to discuss how uh, the GCC and the Gulf cannot miss out on this opportunity. Um, with me on this uh, fantastic uh, panel, in um, no particular uh, order, uh, just happens uh, how we were seated, um, but His Excellency uh, Bandar uh, al khrayf uh, who needs no uh, introduction, he is the Minister uh, of uh, Industry uh, and Mining in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, also uh, has been in this position for uh, three uh, years. Uh, or a little bit more, just to be uh, accurate. And uh, he's actually on tour. And uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting with him yesterday to be briefed on his conversations 
that he's had here in, um, in France. Uh, just to go over uh, our uh, fantastic panel, actually we have uh, His Excellency Jasim Al-Badawi, the Secretary General of the GCC, as we talk about the GCC as a bloc. Uh, His Excellency was also Ambassador of Kuwait to the United States uh, of uh, America. Uh, we have from the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs uh, of France, the Director uh, of the uh, MENA uh, region, uh, Anne Guguian, uh, please, I, I've used up all my French uh, knowledge in the first two sentences, so if I pronounce, if I mispronounce the names, please for, uh, forgive me. Um, we have uh, uh, Magali uh, Cessna from the um, Department uh, of uh, Treasury, and uh, last but not least, uh, Monsieur Laurent Saint-Martin from uh, Business uh, France uh, to give us the French uh, per perspective. Um, allow me to kick in straight uh, uh, into the conversation. Uh, um, Ms. Cessna, um, your department supports uh, the French um, uh, economy and uh, promoting it, uh, out, uh, promoting France as a place to do uh, business. Um, I just came from Riyadh. Uh, I arrived yesterday. Uh, two days ago, there was the first ever edition of the Arab Chinese uh, Business Conference, where ten billion dollars were signed of, of deals were signed on day one. Uh, the second day, the Emirates, the United Arab Emirates, announced that its vision with India to increase non-oil trade to one hundred billion dollars uh, uh, of uh, investment by 2030. So my question to you, uh, just to kind of uh, give this morning an energetic start, where is France and uh, what are your plans to catch up with these uh, two major competitors, India and China? Thank you for all your broad <laughs> questions. Um, uh, and thank you, Minister, to be here, and uh, Secretary General, and of all of you. And as it has been said uh, in the beginning by uh, Mr. Le Maire, uh, this event shows um, the necessity, first of all, to increase our cooperation and uh, the, willing, the willingness of all of us to increase cooperation. Um, I'm in charge of um, um, economic bilateral affairs and uh, export credit, but also attractiveness. In, uh, uh, I'm involved in attract attractiveness policy in the, in the Ministry of Economy and Foreign Affairs. And uh, as you said, uh, um, global challenges are um, diverse. Uh, you, uh, you, co you mentioned uh, COVID crisis, which um, changed our lives and uh, impact our economies. You mentioned the war in Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Le Maire mentioned uh, the economic, economic and ecological transition. Uh, and you mentioned chat GDP. Uh, I, uh, uh, we, we, you're right. Actually, uh, we should uh, we should in, um, we we should have it in in, in mind. What my ministry, my ministry, the Ministry of uh, um, Economy and Finance, does in these fields. First of all, uh, let me focus a little bit on uh, uh, economical transition. Um, Mr. Le Maire explained it very well, and uh, um, we um, all our tools, what we uh, the tools we have to support uh, cooperation and trade um, between, for instance, Gulf countries and and France, uh, we have decided to uh, uh, focus them on green transi transition. Uh, for instance, uh, in 2019, uh, we decided to uh, ban su uh, financial support to uh, coal industry. Uh, we decided this year to uh, suppress uh, export, um, export, uh, um, export financing for um, f uh, fossil fuel industries and from all the, all the chain value. Uh, from exploration to uh, um, to, uh, uh, to distribution, and uh, and of course uh, our ministry explain uh, and minister explain it. Uh, we uh, the government has a very uh, high uh, important uh, um, bill uh, which is going to be discussed uh, 
uh, in, um, in, uh, in the Parliament next week in a green, uh, green transition. Um, so uh, I think that um, uh, we have, and mi mi Mrs. Anne Guéguin will explain it better than I do, uh, the partnership we'll, uh, we will to uh, focus on are going to, um, well, I I'm going to say something which is quite personal. I'm, um, I used to travel in the Gulf countries 20 years ago. And um, I travel in Gulf countries today. And I'm quite impressed by the change of these countries. And I think that you are going to, uh, to talk about diversification of the economy. And uh, um, we are, our enterprises are already involved in this diversification. Uh, big companies, I'm not going to quote all of them. Uh, and uh, they want to, and uh, I think that some of them are in uh, in this room, they want to uh, to be uh, more involved in this, transi uh, this transition. And I, well, uh, there's not only China, Russia, or uh, uh, these countries in the world, and I think that um, uh, maybe the tension, the ge geopolitical tension we are facing between um, China and other countries give rooms to a better cooperation for um, Gulf countries and European countries, and above all, French, uh, French companies. Absolutely, there is always plenty of benefits from uh, competition, but it does take two to tango, so allow me to go to His Excellency, uh, Minister uh, uh, Boudaoui, uh, and let me uh, ask you, Your Excellency, um, since it is take two to tango, uh, the GCC clearly, as has proven with India and China and other countries, is open uh, for uh, business. Um, yet the free trade agreement, for example, with the EU has been lingering since 1990. Um, what do you think the reason, uh, and just to put, just put the facts in place, the EU is the second trading partner with the GCC after uh, China, so it is there up uh, ranking high, but why do you think uh, there is a gap? Is it a matter of priority for the EU that they don't look at the GCC as an important market, or is it sheer bureaucracy? Thank you, Faisal. Uh, actually, uh, first of all, I want to thank you and thank the organizers of this uh, very important event for uh, give the GCC for giving the GCC the opportunity to come and, and speak out on behalf of the Secretariat. Uh, you asked a very good question, and the FTA actually is part of, of the, the points that I wanted to highlight in my short intervention here. But before we, we start this, uh, or before we answer your question, we, we need to look at the Gulf as a whole and what does it represent to France. And France's relationship with the, with the Gulf comes in two tracks. The first track is the bilateral one, France GCC, France each country, and the second one comes as EU GCC. And those tracks, they complete each other, and they work hand in hand, and you cannot separate them. You have to look at the picture as a whole, because we are, as GCC countries, involved with the international community as a whole, for example, the FTA and other uh, uh, issues. Also, France cannot be involved with us unless it comes to us through the EU. So you have to keep in mind that there are two tracks and, and they entertain each other and they complete each other. The other point that I want to highlight is how reliable the Gulf uh, countries have been internationally. We have been proven to every region that we are involved with that we are reliable partners. We are partners that you could trust us we are serious partners, and when we do business, we do it without hidden agenda or without any uh, sort of uh, uh, planning uh, in a negative way. We are always in the positive side. We always come with a positive agenda. Uh, our, our role internationally and globally and regionally is a, a very important role, and it has been proven that we are... Uh, uh, there for, for our region, we uh, uh, have done many plans, we have catered many uh, 
uh, issues and stood by so many of our uh, Arab partners and Arab brothers in our region. Uh, one of the issues that we are uh, very proud of is our serious plans toward our economical uh, integration, Gulf economical integration. And this has four major events that, or four major uh, elements that we are working on. The first one is our uh, railway uh, project. The Gulf railway project was, which kicked off and it will finish, I hope, by 2026. This will tie the six countries with rail that will cater for uh, uh, passengers and for goods. The second one is the that we are very proud of, which is our uh, electricity uh, connectivity and electricity grid. We are so connected with each other now in the Gulf that we are uh, uh, we just signed on on or kicked off on last Thursday a project with Iraq to provide Iraq with electricity. The other two elements which we are working hard on and. Uh, maybe Mr. Uh, Minister al Khrayev also could add to it, which is our custom union and our uh, common market. Those are the challenges that we are now working on within the GCC, within the Secretariat and the six countries. This is where we can prove to the international community that we are one, we are a unit, and we are a... a, a, a a, a common market where you can come and do a business with us. Now, I want to shed light on the ambiguity sometimes that we see our friend in Europe uh, see us. And this is a very important factors that will uh, ease us in the Gulf and uh, know that Europe is serious in dealing business with us. Uh, we have not seen FDI, European FDI, in our countries as much as we do, even though our sovereign funds are uh, working from Europe. We uh, trust the European markets where many of our investment foreign and, and uh, sovereign fund operate in Europe. Number two, the visa issue. We have been asking for a waiver of visa for the Schengen for more than 10 years now. And Europe still put obstacles in our face every time we ask for this. Any European from the EU can go to the airport, catch a flight, go to Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Oman, without any restrictions. Whereas any Gulf person needs at least weeks to get his visa to come to. And it's a very important element. You cannot underestimate this factor. It shows trust, it shows uh, uh, partnership. Number three, you mentioned the FTA. Uh, we are knocking the door on Europe. There are obstacles. There is a new uh, version of FTA that Europe wants to introduce, which has elements that has nothing to do with business and we are trying to talk to them uh, uh, with this. I uh, want to uh, finish by thanking the CEO of uh, Business France uh, when he said that he is encouraging uh, French companies to go to, to and invest in our region. It's a, it's a great region. You know it very well. You just need to clarify the ambiguity that I just mentioned to you. And I think we have a, a, a great formula in doing business and integrating with each other. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And I would like, thank you. <laughs> and I would also like to thank you for really helping uh, pave the way for the follow-up questions, both for Mr. Uh, Sam Martin and for His Excellency, uh, Minister Al Khurayif. I'm gonna uh, uh, start from where you talked about GCC uh, unity. Uh, Your Excellency, does GCC stand for Gulf Competition Council or Gulf Cooperation Council? In other words, is the ultimate amazing uh, success that uh, the Kingdom has seen in the past few years, as we see the fruitation of the investment that has been done in Vision 2030, the rise in tourism, the rise in destination uh, uh, marketing of, of Saudi Arabia, foreign direct investment coming into Saudi Arabia, 
there seems to be an, uh, an obsession, uh, at least in financial newspapers abroad, that this has to be at the expense of Saudi Arabia's uh, neighbor. So what is the point of view? Does a rising tide necessarily lift all boats, or is it going to be success on the expense of another? Thank you for the question, and I would first would like to uh, thank you all for being here. I'm really happy to, to join. Thanks for the organizers, uh, Business France, for uh, taking the time to bring something like this. I think uh, also it's a very inspiring speech by uh, uh, His Excellency Le Maire about different things that I would like to point out. So. The short answer is definitely it is cooperation. And that today, I think we are enjoying excellent times. If anybody here knows Saudi Arabia, he would realize that the times that we are living today in Saudi Arabia is just inspiring by all means. And it is the case in all different sectors, but I would like to focus on my area of, of expertise or responsibility at least, which is industry and mining today. One of the beauties about our vision is that it is laying the foundation of a clarity for all stakeholders who are interested to participate. So uh, everything we are doing definitely is leading to prosperity to our people, is leading to making sure that our people are benefiting uh, today and for the future. But at the same time, we are also mindful of the fact that our country is, is a small country, but have great resources. Our region is a small region when we talk about GCC and has great ambitions. Today, we believe that Saudi Arabia with GCC can compete globally. And, through, and to compete globally, they need to cooperate also and integrate in, in, in the region. Both our strategy in mining our strategy in uh, manufacturing or industry actually spills out where our strengths are and where we can play in the different parts of the supply chain. Not only that, we also are discussing uh, uh, the, how our neighboring countries can participate and benefit from the overall strategies that we have. Uh, there is I think there is no, no one who can believe that a sector like mining can be unlocked by a country on its own. You need the collaboration of all. So mining is a good example where we created what we call the future mineral form that His Excellency just mentioned. It is a platform to bring all stakeholders in Riyadh discussing the challenges, the opportunities, how we can cooperate, it is a, a platform for government, mining companies, service providers, academia, and uh, financial institutions. This is a key element, and also it is a true demonstration of how uh, Saudi Arabia is thinking to, uh, uh, while it is uh, developing its sector, it is also uh, participating in the supply chain disruption that is happening, it is participating in ensuring there is enough minerals for the transition. And this is an important, uh, probably, uh, example of what we are doing with regards to cooperation on a global level. On a regional level, we are discussing with all GCC countries how we can complement each other from a logistic point of view, from a processing point of view, from um, finished goods, uh, from adding value in, in uh, the, the different value chain. So definitely it's, it's going to be a, a, a collaboration. Um, an element of positive competition is always good also to ensure that when, when, when we do things, we are actually doing the right setup that allow us to be competitors for, uh, on a global scale. Last year, Saudi Arabia uh, was uh, was the president of the uh, had the presidency of the GCC. We made in our sector two major, I think, uh, uh, um, uh, achievements. One is the common industrial law, which allows different countries and different investors 
uh, from the Gulf and abroad to, to have a, a unified uh, investment in uh, law in, in industry. And the second is really an umbrella of our uh, different strategies. All GCC countries have their own uh, view of how they want to uh, unlock the value of industry. And this overarching strategy is basing uh, the, the discussion towards collaboration in the region, but being also competitive uh, globally. Thank you, Your Excellency. A quick follow-up question for you before I move to our other um, uh, speakers. And I just have to say, I'm very lucky as a man moderator to have this excellent panel. Um, I just want to go back to my, my question. So do you agree with me that the shift in conversation, so maybe if you remember uh, when we perhaps first met three or four years ago, the conversation in global media was more skeptical is, okay, we hear you. Can actually Saudi Arabia achieve what it says is going to be? Now, the conversation has shifted towards, oops, uh, this is gonna create damage for uh, other people. So clearly the skepticism about whether or not Saudi Arabia can achieve it has changed. And uh, if that's the case, um, as they say, with great powers comes great responsibility. So uh, Saudi Arabia is doing what's good definitely for, for Saudi Arabia. But how could this economic prosperity, um, this stability in the region be beneficial for the region as a whole? But as we are here in France, uh, how could this uh, opportunity be beneficial for France and Europe? Well, <clears throat> um, when I, I first visit to, to uh, Davos as a minister in 2020, and my la latest visit to Davos 2023, the discussion have changed dramatically. I mean, in 2020, a lot of people are, you know, accusing Saudi Arabia of talking too much and not delivering. Today, it is, it is, it is clear for everyone that we uh, talk the talk and walk the walk. We are actually delivering. We have great stories to tell of how we are doing different things. And if you look at our different strategies, you will realize that the strategies definitely take into account our uh, uh, national interest, the way we want to develop and benefit from our uh, natural resources, be it oil and gas or, uh, uh, or uh, minerals, our geographical location. But also, most of our strategies are also mindful of how can we as a country participate in the global community's challenges, different challenges, supply chain disruption, uh, net zero targets, environment, and so on. And uh, um, uh, I'm happy to hear uh, also His Excellency Le Maire talking about uh, that today GCC is no longer a supplier of, of oil. It is a real participation, it's a pa participating in all difficulties of global community. And we are part of the solution. And this is probably one thing that we need to always think about is how we can we make, change the mindset of the uh, large countries to think about Saudi Arabia and the GCC, not in the form of a supplier customer sense, but in a more uh, partnership approach. How can we work together to solve the problems of today, but also to ensure that we are solving the problems for tomorrow? I think the relation uh, of, of the countries with Saudi Arabia and with GCC must change from a concept of supplier customer to a partnership. That mindset shift will definitely mean a lot to those who want to come to Saudi Arabia, who want to invest for the future, be part of uh, what we are doing, understand it very well, challenge what we are doing, and work with us to improve how we can reach the targets. Thank you, Your Excellency. I take that uh, as a segue to go straight to uh, Mr. Youssef Martin, and I would like to combine the comments that you've made with the comments that His Excellency uh, uh, Jassim Badawi uh, said, and direct the question uh, to you. Um, you. You know, this is a clear opportunity for France uh, in the GCC. There's an opportunity for the GCC uh, in France. Yet, what we've heard so far on, on the panel is uh, a, a delayed FTA uh, agreement. The uh, foreign direct investment isn't where uh, as it should be. 
uh, as has Excellency just alluded now, there still seems to be a, a perception or a look towards business as a supplier or as a vendor as opposed to a real a deep and broad relationship. So my question is, uh, how could business France tackle all these uh, issues? And frankly, about, apart from uh, um, uh, lobbying uh, for it, uh, what tools do you have to enforce this? Because this is clearly in the interest of your country. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. And I would like to, to enhance what uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Minister said, because I totally agree that uh, uh, the next step uh, when we are talking about trade relationship between uh, France and GCC country is to go from a uh, buyer-supplier relationship through a real partnership. Meaning it's not only about trade, but it's also about techno technological partnership, for example, uh, m and partnership, etc. So, so it's a deeper partnership that we have to we have to focus on, and this is part of our job, of course, uh, in business for us. Um, to answer you directly, uh, as we are talking about the um, global challenge in this roundtable, I would like to focus a bit on uh, energy transition to uh, to give an, a very concrete example and uh, to explain you what Business France as a government agency concretely do for uh, French SMEs and for uh, GCC uh, investors. And I will give you just some very uh, talking example for you to understand the kind of operation we can create for companies. Because at the end, what you have to remember from me is that we work for business, for companies, French company and GCC uh, country companies, uh, of course. For example, as an evidence, Business France organized um, what we call the French Clean Tech Days. French Clean Tech Days is an operation, a specific operation. Then we gather French SMEs and startups, of course, in the field, in the sector of clean tech, and we make them go and discover all the uh, GCC uh, market. We make them know the different countries depending on the opportunities they can have uh, uh, there and uh, we organize that in the frame uh, of the world future energy summit in abu dhabi for example so we use a specific local event uh, which is in this case in abu dhabi and we organize a roadshow for this uh, french smes to make them connect uh, local uh, local business another example we can do at uh, at business france of course, you know, in France and uh, in uh, the GCC country, uh, energy from uh, nuclear plants and nuclear energy plays a key role, of course, in the energy mix. So uh, we support French companies and French SME directly involved in this sector to export, but also, as we were talking about partnership, to create partnership there uh, when we are talking about uh, nuclear uh, energy and nuclear uh, plants. It's an event that we built up a few, uh, a few years ago called eFusion. And what is very interesting is that we organize it with the French sector, of course, our own uh, Comité Stratégique de Filière, but also with uh, the uh, Emirati uh, operator, called ENEC. So we use also the both institution to make this bridge to create partnership for our, our company. So it's a public-private cooperation that Business France uh, build uh, also for, uh, for your success. And while I'm talking to you this morning, at this very moment, our team in Dubai, directed by Axel uh, Barou, uh, present uh, here today, we are launching the French Solar and Sustainable Expedition towards the COP28 that uh, Bruno Le Maire mentioned. So it's very concrete. Exactly right now, there are some French companies uh, we, uh, we support and, uh, and uh, we make them uh, uh, travel uh, in, uh, in this French Solar and Sustainable uh, Expedition with a partnership, public-private, once again, which is the Dubai Electricity and Water Authorities for the public perspective, and Total Energy, for example, from the private French perspective, supporting and, uh, and, uh, and partnering this, uh, this operation. So in terms of ODI, when France exports, we can organize very concrete operation to make our companies, SMEs, connect and know better the uh, market in and of course, in their own interest, but from a partnership perspective, and not only 
from a trade perspective. And this is very important because it answers as a concern of a uh, um, minister, and uh, it's very important that we we, we go uh, we go forward uh, exactly uh, uh, in this way. And from an FDI perspective, of course, I want to uh, tell the same uh, uh, the same words as uh, Minister Le Maire. But it is true that our goals and our priority gather. It is true that green transition, green energy, are our main focus from the GCC countries, from France, country, from France as well. So when you have common strategy, of course it's easier to talk with the same language and to have common interest. But it's easy to say it, it's more difficult to make it concrete, so you have to, you have to show to the other one what is your force, what is your advantage. In France, I told it, it's uh, France 2030, which is a huge public investment plan, uh, 54 billion euros, which is the highest and the strongest public investment plan in France we have seen. And of course, uh, for example, in, uh, in KSA, uh, you have exactly the same priority for uh, reindustrialization, green industrialization, and uh, of course, uh, uh, settling uh, a, a growing number of factories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have the same interest, so we can invest in each other. And of course, uh, GCC investment are welcome uh, here, and that's our job as well at Business France to be there. We have offices in uh, in Dubai, uh, in Riyadh, uh, in Qatar, and uh, we are there to make our. Uh, uh, our staff meet local investors to make them choose France. So we have both way job, and it is very, uh, very important as well that all the people here based in the GCC countries that still don't know our teams uh, of business from there to meet them and uh, to understand more uh, how, uh, how, how great can they make deals in France for them. No, thank you for that, but uh, allow me to push back and you know there is no question that in the short period in the last short period of time business France has left its mark uh, you have your offices you have your teams the, the issue here is convincing investors or businesses to move here for something that probably has nothing to do with your uh, authority I'm referring to the bureaucracy and legislation uh, from a newsroom perspective from somebody who watches uh, you know France 24 or uh, Euronews or CNN, all we see is gilets jaunes, all we see is protests because you wanted to increase the retirement age for two years. When you have countries like the United States where an 80-year-old president wants to run for four more years. So, um, you know, you can see how it's a matter of perspective. I mean, what's the big deal? Let people work two more uh, years. Uh, what I'm trying to say is it has a lot to do with the sentiment. And uh, my fear is... All the amazing work that you are doing, um, trying to convince uh, companies to come over, uh, building the case, um, how much sway do you have on the legislation uh, or the regulation? Because uh, as far as an observer looks at it, this seems to be the major uh, obstacle. We love France, we love France culture, we love uh, French manufacturing uh, quality, but it's very difficult to do business. Well, thank you for loving France first. and. Uh... We have some MPs here who, c who could answer about the, the legislation part, but of course we are we are lobbying, of course, uh, uh, to make France more and more attractive. But to be very serious and concrete, you, I understand that you talk about gilets jaunes, about strikes, and about what you can see on TV. But in reality, uh, we have more and more projects in France. Uh, for the fourth years in a row, France is the leader country in Europe in terms of FDI. And Gilets jaunes were in uh, 2018, for example, or 2019. Uh, we increase year after year, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Every year we have more and more FDIs. And year and year we have more and more jobs directly created by FDIs. So I understand from a sentimental and a, a TV show perspective what you say. But the reality is different. The reality is that we attract more and more projects because when you're a businessman and when you're an investor, what you want to know is that is France more attractive in terms of uh, tax rates? Yes. Is France more attractive in terms of uh, labor law? Yes. Is France more attractive in terms of 
jobs and skills, yes. Is France more attractive in terms of uh, what we can have about industrial sites ready to use, yes, etc., etc. And what the, the government did uh, since 2017 is way more important in terms of attractiveness than some images you can see on TV, because it's normal in democracy that you can have people who disagree. It's not my job to say it. You have some senators here who are more able to tell it than me. But uh, what is true is that uh, the investor is uh, rational. And at the end, what is rational is number, ROI, and how do you find skills to develop your business in France. And this works more and more every year. So maybe for... Uh... So, uh, thank you, uh, thank Your Excellency. Perception does matter. Um, it's more uh, sentiment does matter. It, uh, it's why people prefer particular c countries. Maybe in the next edition of uh, this forum, we will have some legislators and bring some businessmen and let them uh, argue until one, one, one side convinces the other. Um, last but certainly not least, and I want to thank you, uh, uh, Anne, for your uh, patience uh, with us. Um, we, you come from the uh, Foreign uh, Ministry. Um, His Excellency Jason Bader, we talk about a few things, including the uh, Schengen uh, visa. Um, and let me say this, uh, let me just choose my words carefully. You are responsible for the MENA uh, region uh, in, uh, in the ministry. And uh, just like when we talk about uh, Europe, we don't, you know, Europe, you know, as a continent, yes, it's a continent, but different parts of Europe are very different. Um, I note that the EU uh, has uh, appointed its first ever envoy uh, to the Gulf countries. And this is very recent, which is a very welcome uh, development. Given the uh, you know, economic prosperity uh, and uh, um, you know, economic boom that's happening uh, in the region and the stability that's happening in the GCC, uh, don't you think uh, your department should have its uh, own focus uh, on the GCC countries? Because, uh, you know, with, uh, we all hope that the rest of the Middle East catches up with this prosperity and the economy. But um, I would imagine a lot of your job would be firefighting in uh, countries in the Levant or North Africa that are facing uh, problems. Uh, as opposed to uh, working with, uh, uh, you know, Business France or uh, um, uh, businesses in the region to help promote investment and French interests in the region. So the question is, uh, shouldn't there be a division uh, dedicated to the uh, nature of the Gulf region uh, in your ministry? Thank you uh, very much. And uh, First, I would like to reiterate uh, how happy we are uh, to have uh, His, Ex His Excellency Minister El Khodarev uh, and uh, His Excellency Secretary General El Boudewi with us uh, here in Paris uh, uh, today and also all our uh, friends and partners from, from the Gulf. I think that this uh, uh, meeting is uh, a sign of this changing mindset that uh, His Excellency the Minister was calling for. Um, we. Uh, really uh, have one message, and this is, this is something I would like you and, and participants uh, to, uh, to take away with you, is that France is really committed to build a partnership that is a true partnership, so, uh, and that is a partnership that is both strategic and comprehensive, and with each individual GCC countries, as well as with the GCC as a whole, and we do this as France, I mean, we very much care about uh, France relationship with uh, the region and uh, each uh, uh, member states in the, in the GCC, but also as France as part of the uh, European Union. And we've been uh, a leading um, country in uh, the elaboration of this new partnership of the EU with the, uh, the, the, Gulf, the, the Gulf countries that has led uh, among other things, to the appointment of uh, Mr. Luigi Di Maio as the new um, uh, special envoy uh, for, for European Union to, 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 the, to the region. Uh, we also have the, the, uh, the EU has adopted, uh, as, as, you, as you may know, a strategy last year during the French uh, presidency of the European uh, Union uh, Council. And this is not a coincidence. We really pushed for it. Um, and uh, we're also pushing the EU to extend and enlarge its footprint uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the region. 
and we have also French diplomats uh, very much involved in that. We actually, uh, the uh, new uh, EU delegate to, the, to Saudi Arabia uh, is going to be a, a French uh, a diplomat. Um, and, and we also uh, very much uh, in favor of uh, the liberalization of, uh, of, the, of, of the visa. It's, it's, a, it's a complex matter, we can't do it alone, but this is really uh, something uh, that's, that is now really in the works for good. It's taking a bit more time, uh, but uh, I'm very, I'm very ho hopeful on, 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 this, um, on this issue. Um, you were mentioning the way we organized at the, uh, at the, at the French uh, MFA. Uh, it's a very, you know, uh, standard uh, uh, division, um, uh, geographical division. We have the MENA uh, region, which is a very uh, large region, and we have subdivisions. And uh, I want to reassure you that we have a, a, a specific subdivision uh, that is dealing uh, with, the, with, the, with the, Gulf, uh, the Gulf countries, uh, which um, uh, are really a, a huge priority uh, nowadays uh, for us. Um, you, you started by reminding us uh, the um, uh, unprecedented uh, nature of the external shocks that, that we've been experiencing in the past few years, uh, COVID, now the, the, the Ukraine war, uh, which really uh, stresses the uh, global and systemic uh, nature of the challenges and the transformations that we are, that we are facing. And um, uh, I think uh, Minister uh, Le Maire really stressed that one, one of the main challenges that we have to face together is the challenge of sustainability, sustainability uh, of our, our uh, way of uh, living, of producing, of consuming. And um, this means that the public goods that we need uh, for this sustained uh, prosperity uh, which uh, are, you know, clean air, water, uh, clean environment, uh, uh, accessible, available uh, uh, energy, uh, uh, public health, um, you know, um, uh, livable climate, uh, but also uh, connectivity and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the digital world, the functional uh, digital world. All this, uh, these public goods now are, are, are global goods. Uh, and this and this is and this is this is where we we need we need we need we need each other and we uh, we see that uh, the gcc uh, countries are at the center of the uh, geo uh, political and geo economic transformations of our world today uh, and the the challenges are not only economic they're also um, uh, political and geopolitical uh, on on the security level uh, we see that uh, threats and crises are all interconnected. I mean, uh, addressing them in isolation is not an option anymore. Um, and uh, we also see that the international, international order is now very much an international disorder, and uh, we are facing unprecedented uh, challenge to the rules and the structures that were established after World War II. And this, again, uh, means that uh, we have uh, really uh, an urgent need to re-inject cooperation, a uh, true spirit of cooperation and partnership at the center uh, of our strategies. And this is really what we uh, want to, to, to do with the, with the GCC. And uh, we have um, very comprehensive uh, relations with each uh, uh, GCC uh, member state, and we uh, are in the in the way of uh, elaborating a, a, a plan of action uh, between France and the GCC as an institution. And uh, Secretary General Boudaoui is is in, is in Paris and will have um, uh, fruitful, I'm sure, discussions uh, tomorrow in the in the in the MFA on this on this matter. Um, when I'm saying uh, we want a comprehensive partnership. Uh, I mean that we, we do this on security. And here, a key word, I think, is reliability. You know, you, you, you challenged um, uh, the um, president of, uh, of Business France on, on the attractivity of, of, of France, uh, economically uh, speaking, and business on, on business issues. But I think that one thing that we, that we offer as France is reliability um, as, a, as, a, as a strategic uh, uh, partner. We've shown it. Uh, in the past uh, few years to uh, our partners in the, in, in, in the Gulf, and they know it. 
um, and um, and we uh, also are very much uh, focusing on uh, energy uh, transition and the COP28 I think is uh, really uh, um, a, a big uh, a priority for all of us uh, today uh, as well as uh, on sustainability of our economic uh, development uh, uh, globally. And uh, you may know that uh, next week in France, we will have an important summit for a new financial um, uh, model uh, that, uh, that uh, President Macron is, uh, is, is hosting. And we are expecting a very high level uh, guests uh, from, from the GCC, uh, from GCC uh, countries uh, for, for, for that. Thank you. I think a very clear message, uh, Your Excellency, about uh, true partnership and reliability. And speaking of reliability and French products, we would like to thank you for your most valuable export, Karim Benzema, who, <laughs> who signed with Al uh, Ittihad in my hometown, actually, of, uh, of uh, Jeddah. And uh, we hope, uh, we wish him a successful uh, career and that um, him and the other players that are joining us uplifts the whole Saudi uh, league. Uh, Madam Cessna, you had a, a follow-up. I will hear from you before I go for my final round of questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to stress one thing. You asked a que uh, question to Mr. Khoayev, uh, how um, other countries, GCC countries or Fr France, can benefit from uh, the new strategy uh, the, the Saudi government is uh, implementing. But, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, French enterprise already benefit uh, from it because, uh, as I said in the beginning, they are very involved in uh, renewable energy, in tourism, for instance, and in uh, uh, waste management, in uh, many fields that are focused uh, by, uh, by the vis vision uh, 2030. So uh, partnership and cooperation are not only their institutional uh, partnership and cooperation, but it's not uh, the whole scope of cooperation. Cooperation is only is also um, concrete cooperation between uh, private private uh, companies, and uh, this is already the case. And another thing I wanted to uh, focus on: uh, uh, you should ask for the next uh, event. You should ask foreign investors uh, who was already invested in France. What uh, is their perception of France? And you will see that uh, they don't have uh, uh, the image of a gilet jaune country. They have a really uh, another image, and they know very well France because they are in France, uh, and they uh, they are um, they underline the, the quality of uh, education, the, the commitment of employees the infrastructure, the quality of infrastructure, and many things which explain that we attract so many uh, projects uh, uh, in France uh, since, uh, since uh, a few years, and uh, has the, the, the survey made by EY uh, shows it. Well, I'll do something even better. Uh, you have it as commitment from Arab News and Arab News French that we will do a survey uh, among uh, to see the appetite and the perceptions of business and by the time we do this event next year wherever it's going to be we will be sharing the results and having uh, a discussion with you and that is a, a commitment i want to go to uh, just to show that we mean business as his uh, excellency uh, said uh, your excellency uh, was i being too harsh on, uh, on on france you outlined in your opening remarks uh, a lot of opportunities a lot of industries um, we know for sure that uh, the French are very active in Al Ula, for example, in the archaeology and the restoration uh, of uh, the sites in uh, Al Ula. But uh, at least in your ministry or in the mining uh, industry or the sectors that you oversee, uh, what, uh, who are the, uh, uh, if we want to call them the uh, key players or the rock stars of uh, French industry uh, that are cooperating, for example, with Saudi Arabia? Yes, you were sh very harsh on France, so, uh, and they are, we are guests here, so we have to be also. But it's true. I mean, yesterday I had an uh, uh, excellent meeting with uh, my counterpart, the Minister of uh, Industry. And uh, um, when we look at our strategy, for example, we laid out in our strategy 12 different uh, sectors. These 12 different sectors can be grouped in three groups. One is resilient sectors where we are 
uh, focusing on things like uh, food security, pharmaceuticals, uh, military, and so on. The second uh, sectors is the sectors where we see we can add value within, within the country. How can we add more value to our petrochemical? How can we go downstream in, in petrochemical? How can we do more in mining, in processing, in uh, producing high uh, value product rather than just sell uh, uh, raw materials? And the third category of, of the industrial uh, uh, sectors that we have chosen is future. How can we position Saudi Arabia to be a player in the future and not to miss out as we have in, 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 in the past? where we can position Saudi Arabia in uh, advanced manufacturing, for example, automation uh, uh, in, the, in the space area and so on. So if I look at all of this, we can find very strong partners in France doing across the board. Today in pharmaceuticals, and in, I'm responsible for a, a mandate in the, in the government for localization of vaccine and bio, biopharma, uh, by, by pharmaceuticals, and there's great collaboration with a lot of uh, French uh, uh, companies in automation and advanced manufacturing, where we see that the future of our industry is going to be uh, very much betting on technology, on adopting uh, AI, 3D printing, uh, uh, additive manufacturing, and so on. There's great solutions that are uh, available here in France. And I think to probably close, I think the the genuine interest we have seen from the different partners towards the positive uh, uh, view they have on the country and how the country can be not only a, um, uh, a strong market, but also a window to different markets, a gateway to other markets. We see Saudi Arabia uh, becoming uh, an industrial powerhouse, but also we see it becoming a strong logistical hub for uh, different uh, players. So I think we have, we have great discussions, and uh, today we can see on the ground that there is, uh, there is uh, uh, action taking place. Uh, what I want to say, I mean, uh, uh, I used to be a salesman, so I will not miss this opportunity also to, to sell our country and uh, uh, invite everyone to uh, understand more and more what we are offering in our strategy, and please reach out to us directly or through uh, uh, the organizers here, and we'll be very happy to explain and work together with all interested parties to see how they can navigate the system and uh, come to Saudi Arabia. The beauty of the nature of FDIs we are looking for, it's not money. We are looking at a long-term relation. We are looking at companies who are willing to come bring technology and grow technology in Saudi Arabia. Uh, RDI in Saudi Arabia, the research, development, and uh, innovation uh, ecosystem is developing greatly to allow Saudi Arabia to be at the forefront of the technologies of advancement in the future and not only to import. So this is the invitation, and I'm sure uh, what I'm saying also applies to all GCC countries uh, alike. So thank you, Your Excellency. Clear words of uh, endorsement there for French uh, business opportunities in Saudi Arabia. Um, I want to also talk, we've talked a lot about the opportunities, but uh, we still have a few minutes left, and I want to talk about the challenges uh, and threats in the region. Um, as I said, uh, as we pointed out, yes, the GCC perhaps has its own characteristics, but we are in a troubled uh, neighborhood. I want to talk to Your Excellency, uh, 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 Mr. Jassim, and uh, Ms. Anne about the uh, Baghdad conference, uh, because, of course, you cannot thrive as a region if you have troubled uh, uh, regions. We've heard from Your Excellency about the uh, electricity uh, project, connection project to, uh, to Baghdad. Um, how could France and uh, the GCC cooperate to spread this uh, positivity uh, in, in the region? And uh, what will be uh, the impact uh, from a business perspective? Uh, starting with you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Faisal. Uh, I think the uh, Jeddah summit, Saudi Arabia, the Arab uh, summit, has uh, uh, 
some serious indicators uh, of positivity in the region. And uh, we have not seen an atmosphere, even though there are a lot of challenges that we have to deal with, a lot of challenges that we have to fix and uh, uh, manage, but the atmosphere of the Jeddah summit was uh, extremely, extremely uh, uh, positive, and the, the outcome uh, and the easiness and the uh, comfortable uh, just uh, atmosphere there was 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 great. So this reflects on on many files in the region. Uh, Iraq is is part of it. Iraq is a strategic partner to the Gulf uh, countries. We uh, have uh, engaged with it in so many times, either bilaterally, each country with Iraq or as, as a GCC, uh, the uh, integration with them with the electricity grid is a major sign of, of cooperation. Uh, there is also uh, a cooperation on bilateral basis with electricity with other countries, with, with Iraq. It's not only the GCC, but some other GCC countries might also be engaged with Iraq uh, in electricity. There is a, a, a trade flow. There is security uh, arrangement and political arrangement with Iraq. Iraq is a very important partner. Now, the, the uh, uh, Baghdad uh, conference, uh, we've seen two editions uh, of it, one in Baghdad and one in Jordan. Now, I think it's going back again to Baghdad in December, as we heard. Uh, uh, it is a platform that provides uh, an opportunity to neighboring countries and countries with interest to uh, discuss the, the, the current situation in Iraq and the future uh, of Iraq. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Sudan is doing a wonderful job. He's getting a lot of support from every GCC country. Uh, we think he is in the right track. The uh, cooperation among the Iraqi, uh, different Iraqi parts is, is in the right track. And uh, you hear nothing but support from GCC and GCC countries uh, to Iraq and Iraq stability and, uh, and the well-being of the Iraqi people. This is uh, also a very important uh, aspect that we, we look after, is the, uh, to make sure that the Iraqi people do get what they deserve. Uh, Absolutely. from a social and uh, uh, security. I aspect. want to take the last remark from Anne regarding the French participation because in the Baghdad conference, President Macron um, uh, attended. And uh, just to follow up on what His Excellency said, so is the event happening in, in December? And what are the, uh, what are the outcomes that uh, your ministry is hoping for? Sure. Um, the the, uh, the, uh, the uh, logic uh, behind the uh, Baghdad conference process is that we have a shared interest in a, lasti in a lasting uh, and sustained de-escalation of tensions in the Gulf and in, in, the, in, the, in the Middle East. I think this is something that we, we have in, in common. Uh, and the, the first priority when it first started in August 2021 uh, was uh, for uh, neighboring countries to uh, provide support to the stability of Iraq, which is a uh, central country uh, in, uh, for, 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 the, for, for, the, for the region. And uh, it provided a platform uh, of an unprecedented format because uh, many countries that were not on speaking terms uh, for years uh, were together at, uh, at the same uh, table. And, and we think that this has helped uh, and uh, consolida helped consolidating the um, dialogues that were open between uh, um, various uh, countries uh, participating and Iran in particular. Uh, so um, we think that beyond uh, this uh, very important uh, role as a, as a platform of dialogue, which you know is uh, certainly a, a factor in bringing down uh, tension, um, the uh, Baghdad conference um, can uh, now uh, focus on promoting concrete cooperation projects, because we, we know that uh, populations um, have uh, common needs. And so um, we uh, discussed uh, previously uh, energy. Um, uh, His Excellency mentioned the uh, electricity uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, we also uh, have um, extreme uh, climate uh, uh, and natural phenomenon, uh, such as sandstorms, that uh, are plaguing uh, several of the countries of the, of the region, and there is a, a need for may maybe 
um, mutualization uh, of, uh, of means to face uh, and manage uh, natural uh, disasters. Uh, we um, need to, to promote uh, connectivity. And uh, I, I, I think that what uh, has worked in Europe, you know, Europe was, was based uh, initially uh, on the idea that it's uh, through trade, through uh, industry, through through um, uh, concrete uh, um, uh, projects of, of cooperation that you, you build a, a lasting uh, stability. And this is very much what we want to, to do. This is what we are discussing. And that, that, that is what will be happening in the third edition of the, this summit uh, by the end of, uh, of the year. Thank you so much. I think uh, we have to congratulate our panelists for an amazing uh, opening session uh, this morning. Um, uh, we, went, we went through quite a lot in just an hour. Just a quick uh, wrap up. Uh, Business France uh, is open. Business France is present in the GCC. Uh, they are doing everything they can to help facilitate uh, investments and move. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs considers the GCC a true partner, uh, not just a transactional uh, 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 partner. Um, we, we, there are uh, logistical challenges and regulation challenges with the EU with the Schengen visa, but that's up for uh, uh, discussion. The world isn't just uh, China and India. France is pretty much still there. We we have an endorsement from His Excellency the Minister uh, of Industry about French and the French opportunities that are available uh, in, in Saudi Arabia and that the economic prosperity in Saudi Arabia uh, is there to help the region and uh, indeed Europe. On, on that note, thank you very much and wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.